Did you know that Desmos can be interactive? Look at this icon moving when I click these arrows. This is purely Desmos, no editing tricks involved. Or look, when I click this button, the star turns Pantone pink, or this button makes a circle a random color. Keep watching this video because this is the only tutorial you'll need to watch on making Desmos interactive. You'll learn how to make pretty much anything you ever dreamed of come to life. To start, how do we even make things clickable? First, we have to make a Desmos account, then go to Account Settings, Advanced, and turn Actions on. This gives you a lot of nice things in Desmos, like making a ticker, and what's that? There's now a clickable thingy under every graph? Let's start simple. I'll make a circle, which will act as a button. Next, my programmer friends might recognize this, but the main thing we do after turning on clickable is going to the click, then doing N, arrow, which is dash greater than sign, N plus 1. Now we have a circle, and every time we click on the circle, our variable n increases by 1. Great, you just learned the basics. Now let's level that up. If I import an image of a penguin, center it at 1010, and add these variables to the image's center, I can make four direction arrows that correspond to shifting my image's center. Voila! If you look in the settings for each arrow, it's just a polygon, and under clickable, I made the corresponding values increase. For more about how to make polygons, I talk about them in this video. You may also notice a couple extra settings under the image, such as width, height, angle, and opacity. You've guessed it, I can take exactly what I've learned to scale and rotate my image. Here, I'll add a button that rotates my image and a button that makes it bigger. Two things to note is that width and height scale independently, so make sure to use the same variable in both of them and scale each correctly. I made my icon 2x1 just for this example. What I need to do is add 2n to width and n to height. Also, know that opacity only measures from 0 to 1. There's still some fascinating things you don't want to miss, but before we go there, could you consider liking and subscribing? It helps out the channel by recommending it to other people like you who may benefit from watching this video. Thanks and back. Whoa, future me who's editing this video, what was that? Well, guess we had that leftover from our epic Desmos performance of I'm Just Ken. Now, Desmos has a lot of functions. I can see that just by scrolling through this function list. One function in particular that I like is the random function, and by looking at the syntax instructions on Desmos' website, I can read that list.random returns a single item selected uniformly from list. Lists are cool because they can set the boundaries for random, and I can make a list of negative 10 through positive 10, counting at every 10th like this, then do dot random. Now, you might have noticed that a randomize button appeared next to the plus sign, and every time we click that button, all of our randomizers get rerolled. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? This is exciting. If we hook this randomizer up to a list, we can randomize anything on any interval. Remember how I made a circle a random color at the beginning of the video? Let's do that again. If you want to learn about color, I made a video about that a while ago, which I'll link up here, so I'll talk as if you already know about color. If I declare a color C sub random as RGB of three independent random variables, I can make a completely random color. Just make sure to make your list from 0 to 255, this, of course, will change if you start declaring your colors in HSV. Now, if we make a circle and set the color at C sub random, whenever we click this button, the circle gets a random color. Speaking of color, we can also set up this star to be any color we want with a similar idea. Let's say I want this star to be either green, blue, or pantone, and I have the RGB colors for each of those. I'll set C sub star to be RGB of R sub 1, G sub 1, and B sub 1, but I'll also set up three buttons that are clickable, and whenever I click them, it sets the three variables to their respective values to get the color I want. Magic. You can create so much with Desmos, I've only touched the surface, so feel free to discover what else you can do. However, there are a couple caveats in that you can only click the screen for in input. There's no keystrokes or system.in or anything like that. But you can program an entire game if you want. There's some videos, in fact, that make Desmos into a coding language, if that helps. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy the video on the left, where I talk about Bayesian curves, which is where you can make pretty much any curve you ever wanted to make. Or you may enjoy the video on the right, where I make a Rickroll in Desmos. Thanks, and see you in either video.